Good morning and happy Christmas to you. Even in these difficult and strange circumstances, these anxious times, we meet together today to rejoice and give thanks for God's great gift to us, his son, Jesus Christ, born as a tiny baby, given for the salvation of the world, given as a light shining in our darkness. I welcome you here to St Andrew's Church in Halstead for a simple service of Holy Communion on this special day. I'm Reverend Katie Deborcia, the Rector here, and our sermon today will be given remotely, pre-recorded by our curate, Reverend Joe Parrott. You are all very welcome as you worship with us, wherever you are. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. I now light the fifth and final candle on our Advent wreath, the central white candle that sign of Christ coming as the light of the world. God, our Father, today the Saviour is born and those who live in darkness are seeing a great light. Help us who greet the birth of Christ with joy to live in the light of your Son, and to share the good news of your love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who has come into the world. Amen. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. So in his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. God, our Father, you sent your Son full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you, our Saviour and our eternal God. Amen. Our first reading for today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. 
His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them at the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a saviour who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We will now hear from Reverend Joe. Good morning, everyone, and a very happy Christmas to you all. As I sit preparing to write this Christmas Day sermon, I imagine as many of you may be feeling, I find myself a little tired, weary, and uncertain of what the future holds. So many different things to us. For some, it's a wonderful time of family and celebration. For some, it's a time that shoots by in a rush of busyness and planning, something that might need to be got through. For some, it's a painful time, lonely and isolated. This Christmas, I think it's fair to say, is unlike any other we have previously experienced. And that has followed a year unlike any other we've experienced. For each and every one of us, it's brought different and sometimes complex challenges, not just for us, but for those we love. I wonder what you might be feeling today. Grateful, safe, hopeful, perhaps alone perhaps anxious, 
or even despairing. I love Christmas. And the more time I spend getting to know Jesus, the more I love it. It can be that it becomes to us so familiar that we forget the enormity of what actually happened. And in my grumpy moments, I find myself irritated by the almost fairy tale sanitized Christmas advert like presentations that we can give to the world. The little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I'm pretty sure that anyone who has ever had any kind of contact with a baby will struggle to believe that that was the case. And yet even such a seemingly insignificant line in a song lessens, even denies the true beauty, wonder and awe of what the gift of Christ was that first Christmas. This year, the Church of England has chosen the theme of comfort and joy. And if any of you have been following our Facebook Advent collections, you will have seen that despite no original intention, a theme has emerged in relation to language. The language we use has different meanings to different people in different contexts. In God's context, and in the context of the incarnation of God made flesh, the language we use takes on a significance so huge, so magnificent, so mind-blowingly awesome, it's hard for us to comprehend. Words matter. Representation matters. In our readings today, we have heard Isaiah's prophecy of Jesus coming and all that that will mean. Words of triumph, hope, glory, celebration, redemption, freedom, and justice. I wonder what that picture conjured in the minds of those who heard it as Isaiah spoke of the coming Messiah. I can't imagine that their first thought, or maybe at any thought, was of a baby. Then we hear the story of Jesus' birth as told by Luke. This year, one line has been highlighted for me in a way that it never has been before. After being told of her pregnancy by an angel, travelling to Bethlehem, giving birth and being visited by shepherds who tell her that they've heard all about her, make a massive fuss of her baby and then go off to tell someone else, it says Mary treasured these words and pondered them in her heart. I wonder if this year, amidst the enforced isolation of COVID, we might have time to really treasure these words and ponder them in our hearts. What does comfort and joy mean to you this Christmas? For many this year, presents won't happen. For many, any food, let alone an abundance of food, won't matter. Many will be worrying about how they will keep a roof over their head in the light of job losses and business closures. For many this year, Christmas will pass them by completely as they battle illness, separated from loved ones. Many will spend Christmas alone. Surely if this year has taught us anything, it's that stuff whilst we recognise that some is necessary for survival and well-being, is not what we treasure the most. Life isn't a neat middle-class cosy supermarket advert. It's messy. It hurts. It can be full of fear and uncertainty. And actually, it's that comfort that Jesus was born into. The theologian Tom Wright tells of a friend who once wrote a sermon entitled, Let's Put Herod back into Christmas, pointing out that the Christmas story was never what we've made of it in popular Western culture. It's about serious danger and God coming to that place to be with us and to accomplish his rescuing work right there. That rescuing work is our comfort and joy. The fact that Jesus is God made flesh, that he came humbly taking the most vulnerable form of possible, 
a baby's cry, the sound of love come down. Emmanuel, God with us. The social work professor and writer Brené Brown gives an example of the difference between sympathy and empathy. A person is in a hole. They're stuck, alone and distressed. Sympathy is looking down the hole and perhaps offering a sandwich, a helpful bit of advice, a sentence starting with the phrase, at least. Empathy is when that person gets into the hole with the other, holds them and sits with them in their pain. And that is just the tip of what God did and does for us. We have a God who loved his creation so much that the creator became the created. Jesus came to us in human form to draw us close to himself. He loved he got angry, he got tired, he felt lost, he felt joy, he felt anxiety. He can meet us where we are, whatever we are feeling, because he made himself one of us. Israel waited so, so long for Jesus. We hear the prophecies of Isaiah, and because we hear them alongside Luke today in the context of Jesus' birth, we miss the timeline in between, and it was one heck of a wait. We too find ourselves in a period of waiting, but there is hope. Isaiah's prophecy was fulfilled. God's promise in Jesus was fulfilled. Jesus' coming at Christmas gives us hope. We are undoubtedly walking through darkness at the moment, but Jesus, the light of the world, isn't a platitudinal comfort or a transient joy based on a moment, a full table, or a gift. He is the sure and certain hope of prophecy fulfilled. God made man who sits with us in the whole and promises a future with him and in him. So today, I offer the invitation to fill the absences of those we love with the promise of hope in Emmanuel, God with us, our saviour and our living hope. All you have to do is ask him in. He loves you. He came to earth so he could have a relationship with you. Jesus is our comfort and our joy. Jesus is our comfort and our joy. Let's treasure those words and ponder them in our hearts. We now affirm our faith in God, the sender of the promised Christ, in the words of the Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. And now, placing our faith in God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we bring before him our prayers for the world, the church, and those we love. Let us pray. In the darkness of this time, we pray, Lord, that your church might shine forth your light brightly into this world through the services that we offer, through the prayers that we raise, through acts of kindness to those with whom, with whom we have contact. We pray that through us, your Son, Jesus Christ, may be made known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this time of darkness, we pray that your light might shine upon those most in need those living in conflict zones, those living as refugees, those living in poverty, in hunger, in insecurity, without knowing they are loved. We pray that somehow in these darkest of situations, there would be that glimmer of your light this Christmas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this time of darkness, we thank you for those in our nation and our community who have been light to us. We thank you for all those working in our public services, particularly the NHS and care and emergency services, for all that they have done this year, all that they continue to do, and especially for those who are working on this day. We pray for those in authority over us in national and local government, that you might give them strength, energy, wisdom and discernment in all that they do and make clear their path before them. We pray for all those known to us who, whether in formal roles or as volunteers or in other ways, have made a difference to us and our communities this year. And just as they have been light to us, we pray that they might be comforted by you, the one true light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this time of darkness, we lift before you those known to us personally, who are in particular need of the light and comfort and joy of Christ. In a time of silence, let us name before God those who are on our hearts this day. We pray in particular for those with whom we had hoped to spend this Christmas time and are now unable to do so. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this time of darkness, we think too of those to whom we have had to say goodbye. We pray for those who have now gone to their eternal rest, that they might be welcomed into your everlasting arms. We pray for those from whom we are separated for other reasons, that they might know your hope and your joy this Christmas. We commit ourselves and all those we love to your eternal care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Placing our trust in the one who came to be saviour and friend, we say, merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, separated though we are by physical distance, we remember our fellowship together in Christ by the Holy Spirit as we share in God's peace together. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. And so this Christmas time, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
We come now to share communion together. I will take the bread and wine on your behalf and we will join together in a prayer of spiritual communion. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because in the incarnation of the word, a new light has dawned upon the world. You have become one with us that we might become one with you in your glorious kingdom. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Christ is the true bread which has come down from heaven. Lord, give us this bread always. The prayer of spiritual communion. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, 
for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. God, our Father, whose word has come among us in the Holy Child of Bethlehem, may the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds, through him who is Christ the Lord. Amen. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Let us go in peace and proclaim the word made flesh. Glory, thanks, and praise to God. Amen. We wish you a very Merry Christmas and we place our trust in God for the year ahead, remembering that Christ is our hope, our comfort and our joy. God bless you all and thank you for joining us. <laughs>